Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Sector with me, JD Colley. I'm sorry we didn't have a video on Friday. Uh, life got in the way with children and such, but we're back today. And uh, also I wanted to say thank you guys so much for all the people in the comments who are answering questions for other people who are new to the game. It really helps me out and it's good to see the community coming together to help new players start to really get into Star Sector. It's a lot of fun that way. So, and I'm learning stuff myself. All right, anyway, let's get in. Okay, so we find ourselves in the Gamma Shedim star, star System. I promise I don't have a speech impediment. I just have a hard time speaking when I'm on camera, but that's okay. So last time we uh, fought Core Rotten, and uh, I managed to find him despite actually setting up to go to the wrong uh, constellation. But we got there in the end, which is good. And... Uh, Today, I was thinking we could potentially go after Jordan Madness here, It'll give us 40,000 credits, and uh, he's in the actual system we were supposed to head to. So, I think we can handle that fleet. Most of those ships are unshielded, so we should be able to chew through them with relative ease. I wish we'd had, we had a high explosive weapon on our ship, which we do not, but well, we do have the missiles, or the torpedoes, but that's, that's not quite what I was looking for. In fact, I think I'm going to do some in-space refitting, oh no, which is never a great idea, but sometimes it's necessary. I think we'll do that. Oh, whoops. I just put the wrong gun back on, didn't I? Oh, well, oh well. There we go. I was wondering. There we go. Okay. So now I have a high explosive weapon on there. That should help out a bit with uh, chewing through people's armor when I'm face hugging them. And you know what? Let's this ship already vents pretty fast with system override, so I'm going to shift those into capacitors just to help us be a little more over or overload resistant. I'm going to do the same with him because AI ships they like to hold on to their capacitor or their uh, their flux a lot, so. Oh, and you, let's see, we want to give you, st uh, what's your, you know, your combat readiness is already up pretty high, we'll wait. Okay, so now the question is, do we go back to civilization, or do we just head out there? It take us 37 fuel. You know, I think we're actually going to head back real quick and grab some more crew. Okay. I know I just refit in space, but if we get an ambush, that'll help me be able to fight off whatever comes after me. So what do we got? Let's go around this big old cloud bank. Maybe not. Mm, that was a mistake. We're going to head back up this way and head down the chute there. I'm using that uh, that trick of just starting and canceling, or canceling and then restarting sustained burn to cancel my momentum, just so I can navigate quickly. And uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but there was no debris field from that previous fight with Core Rotten. Um, normally, if you're fighting a larger fight with more ships, there'll be more debris afterwards. What is this little guy? Starliner, do we? Let's see, I don't know. Oh, 112 crew. There we go. That's what we needed. Okay. Oh, we even got uh, more fuel. Well, that'll help us out. I mean, you normally get fuel, so that's that's not actually odd or anything, but. Okay. Well, since we have the crew now to uh, crew our ship, why don't we just head out then? That'll save us a little bit of time. Okay, back the way we came. Ish. This is not directly the way we came, but... Um, to fly through this cloud bank here, or, well, hyperspace storm bank. Now, um, 
I ha don't believe I talked about it in the previous video, but we do have transverse jump. And the fact that I am running with a ship that's mothballed right now means we cannot use transverse jump. I would unmothball that ship, but I don't really feel like we have the supplies to do that right now. And I don't think that would be a safe decision. I might be running this a little bit risky. Like, this is a pretty slim margin of error on the supplies. If we get really messed up in a fight here, we could be in a lot of trouble. But I really want that 40,000 credits, so I'm going to go in. This is a outer rim, or uh, not outer rim, a outer system jump point, like the one that's not in the middle of all the planets. And uh, I did that because I'm not sure what's in here. I don't want to get jumped by this guy if I, when I just go in. So he was by a rocky metallic world, which we can see right there in the binary star system. And the way I knew this was binary, there's just these two stars, Zendar B. If there's a B, that means there must be an A. They don't name the primary star as A, but if there's a B, that means it's a binary system. And there's only one in the Zendar cluster here. Um, now that I'm actually looking at the correct cluster or constellation for uh, this bounty, I can find it easily, which is normally how it goes. So let's see. Let's scan really quick and just see if there's anybody nearby. Doesn't appear to be. Okay, that's good. I, I like there not being people nearby. Although I would have liked to have seen a bit of salvageable, salvageable, salvageable stuff, but that's okay. We'll just roll on by. Oh, I've got my, my transponder on. That was a mistake. Ooh, oh dear. What the? Ooh. Okay, so that circle there as I think I've talked about in the past, but just to reiterate, that was a interdiction pulse. Um, let's see. Yeah, right there. It interrupts sustain burn and prevents you from using it for a while. And uh, that can be really bad. So I didn't want to get interdicted there, and I barely got out of the circle before the pulse went off. I think you have a day in-game to uh, get out of the way of it, which is not very long. Ooh. That looks suspiciously like salvageable stuff. Okay, so this planet here, if we look at it, see how it's got a little ring of stuff surrounding it? That planet has, is he like little satellites and space station looking things? This is a habit, or not habitable, but a, um, a planet with ruins. Let's see if we can perform a survey. We can. I know it looks very expensive, but we're going to do it anyway in this case. Partially as an example and partially because I need the supplies and it will have them. Extensive ruins. Excellent. And class 2 survey data, which is not great, but it'll do. Explore the ruins. Uh, we didn't get nearly as much as we could have because we did not have the gear, but we made up most of the supplies. Got some more fuel. A whole bunch of luxury goods. We got a, a gamma core. We got a Ludic Path a blueprint package, which I'm going to learn. Well, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to learn it because there's not generally a lot of reason not to, and it's not worth that much. Now, blueprints, these are used later in your colony development when you're actually doing colony management. And uh, you use these in your forges to make ships. Um, that's about all. These are Ludic Path ships. They're not the best, but they can be quite nasty in the right context. So we'll just learn those in a minute. And let's see. We could take more, but that would put us dangerously over our supplies, so we won't do that. We're going to leave those here, unfortunately. How much is that worth? A decent amount, but not that much. Not enough to make it worth it. Now, of course, I would have liked to have gotten more supplies from that because it ended up costing me more than I made by just a little bit, I think. But that's all right. Where'd he go? I think that's the pirates. Yeah, the pirate fleet right there. I cannot fight that. Maybe if I could get them to come follow me. Yeah, they're going to burn. Out, following me. And now if I just... Turn on my 
transponder for a moment so they start following me again so they can see me. Turn it off. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't interdict me. There we go. And I think we got him. Okay, so we're going to hit this fight. Duck in here, kill this guy. He does have officers on every single ship, which is a bit scary, but they're only level 5. So that's not as bad as it could be. But since we only have one officer, and that's me, it is a little disheartening, because officers do improve the performance of ships quite significantly. So let's see how this goes. That's a pretty strong commitment. We don't have many supplies, but hopefully we'll get enough from this fight to justify our engagement. Now I'm going to kind of assign myself to escort him, but I'm not actually going to. Like, I will not allow the ship to be autopiloted this whole time, but I want to kind of stick close to my friend. We're going to target this guy. Oh yeah, I like that uh, use of my shields, or uh, ordnance points a little better there with more more capacity for flux. What does he have? Annihilator, salamanders, mining laser. So he does not have a uh, antimatter blaster, which is important. Chew up his face a little bit. There we go. He's starting to lose his armor now. Back off for a second. Vent. We don't vent nearly as fast. We might want to get a balance between those two. A bit more, bit, bit, bit more vents, but also some capacitors. Come on. Chew him up. Chew him up. Really scare him off. Because we're losing armor too. Oh, I missed. Don't hit me. Those can hit you. Ugh, we need to be more aggressive and just get in there. They're escorting their ships really well, though. Oh, crap. This is bad. Hopefully I won't die, though, which would be bad. Let's have you guys attack. I should have been working with my ally better. Okay, sorry I'm not talking. I'm just concentrating a bit. Hey, leave me alone. Stop it. You're mine. Goodbye. All right, pop in here, help him out because he's getting a bit overloaded. Now this ship is running, um, what do they call them? Uh, makeshift shields, which are very, very inefficient. In general, these will not work well uh, compared to a ship that has default shields. Same with the Cerberus, it does not have shields normally, so it's having to run makeshifts. There we go. We'll exit the battle there. Success. Uh, do we want to pursue? We could do that. Yeah, why not? I'm going to order my second in command to handle it because I don't enjoy pursuits at all. And we got him. Consider ship recovery. Wow, he'd be really cheap. I mean, I wouldn't consider this a destroyer. But you know what? I'm actually going to take this. Uh, Buffaloes are really the worst ships in the game in a lot of ways. But they're almost free, aside from in fuel. So, oh, let's see. He does have degraded engines, which drops him down to a 1, or to an 8. Oof. Actually, I'm not. Until I get a destroyer or something that moves my ships down there in the... Uh, the eight burn speed. I'm going to avoid that. Now oh, there we go. We got supplies enough to cover our uh, entrance into that fight. Got some fuel. 
Actually, we're just going to take all, and then I'm going to control click on that little metal there to bring our cap back down of goods. Confirm and continue. And I'm going to look in here real quick and just right click on my Ludic Path blueprints to learn them. Acquired seven shift blueprints. If you ever want to see which blueprints you have, simply press E to go into your Intel. And then, or actually, no, sorry, not E, D. We want to go to Command. And you can see doctrines and blueprints tells you a little bit about blueprints and then you can see which ones you have you have some by default i now have a bunch of ludic path ones that i not did not have previously seen seven of them these other ones are ones that you have as just the default ships in the game it's, they're not very good there's not very many of them but there you go anyway now we need to get away from these guys because i really don't want to get caught by that fleet I wonder if that would have left a salvage thing. I don't think so. So they don't actually know where we are, as I covered in my trade video. That's his, the edge of his scan range. That's where he last saw us right here. He's looking for us. He doesn't actually know where we are. So we will move onward. And I think we're just going to duck back out to this um, jump point. We could go for the other one that's closer, but I see no reason to risk it. We also got a character point and we just found something i don't know what it was we got two character points hmm. there we go i'd also like to move into industry next um especially early in the game industry is a really powerful uh, tree it's actually good for the entire campaign the only reason i went into technology first is because there are these two skills that are extremely useful for new players the plus burn speed and the terrain movement penalty reduction is extremely useful for avoiding fleets that you would otherwise be caught by, which is a big problem for many new players. You often get caught by fleets because you don't have the experience to know where you should and shouldn't go. So this can just keep you alive. And having more ordinance, po ordinance points makes your ships more powerful just from the ground up. Um, so it's a very strong uh, skill to have. But industry offers some extremely neat things for basically anyone i'd strongly recommend you max out into like max out meaning three points into the, the tier here or the, the tree here and then um, you definitely want to get recovery operations because of that higher weapon and fighter lpc recovery rate um, also the ship recovery rate's nice too and the demod thing is great if you have run a lot of salvage ships this this for pirates this is the best ability in the game pretty much because it just means your ships that you recover from combat are going to be better and pirates don't have as many options for purchasing ships so that makes them that's pretty much their 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 main way of acquiring ships and that's great um this one's great for crew reduction loss this one is really good for sh ship repairs if you're fighting a lot uh later in the game when you start having to deal with fleets attacking your colonies and stuff this is a critical ability because it basically doubles your repair speed it doesn't decrease the cost of it but it makes it so you just are back on your feet faster which is excellent it also has a uh, 50 percent of armor and hull damage taken at, at, repaired after combat at no cost so it's just a kind of get out of jail free card even if your ship is basically destroyed like with one hit point left it'll have 50 percent of its hp in the next fight so it's just good um post battle this is the one you want to get before you really start salvaging if you want to be an early salvager like really dive into salvaging in the early game pick up this first because this will make it so that um planetary salvage and station salvage is simply better if i had this skill completely maxed when i had gone to that planet i would have gotten significantly more goods especially rare goods from that planet so really want this these two are only necessary if you're planning on having lots of colonies this one's really nice if you have any colonies this one's just important if you want to have a large empire but this one's good for just colonies in general so anyway we're going to confirm that and then exit out right there Oh dear. Well, we can fight that if we have to. We just beat a fleet that was essentially like that, but better. But I think we can get out without having to fight them. I normally would, but we just don't really have the supplies. And we're getting kind of low on CR, which is important because our ships are running safety overrides. So we're going to just jump out. 
once you've touched a jump point, they cannot in, like intercept you. You're essentially invincible for a short period of time. And I don't think he's going to pursue us out of the system. So we're going to go back to Yama, I think, and Salamanca. Show system info. Let's go there. Alrighty. So I'm going to fly back to Salamanca. And uh, barring any events, I will see you there. I'm probably going to cut more often um, as the series, go series goes on, just because you've seen how to navigate through hyperspace storms and stuff. And I'll just try and keep it to things that are interesting rather than just trying to fill the, uh, the time in between with Babel. So anyway, see you in a minute. All right, so we've gotten here to Salamanca fairly uneventfully. Um, one thing I did want to look at, though, as I arrived here, is there is an abandoned siphon station. Now, there are, I believe, three um, stations in the uh, core sectors that are generated by default. Like, they're not random. They are not part of the, uh, the random generation of the rest of the sector. They will always be in the same places. One of them is here in the... Yama star system. One of them is in Corvus, around Asharu, and the other, I believe, is in Mayasura. Let me check. Let's look at the system map. Yes, there at Mirath, there is the abandoned Astropolis. Now, these stations, um, what they do, well, they're abandoned. That's what they do. Um, I already sold my stuff at the station, by the way. Or not the station, that's the Navway over here. I had a recording error, so uh, I just missed like, you know, two minutes of video. But anyway, we, we sold our goods, and anyway, we're going over here, and this is the abandoned station. It's abandoned, there is no market, no colony info, you can't buy things here, but what you can do is store them. And in fact, we're going to store all of these goods here, because this is free. I will not be ever charged for this, and no one will ever come here and steal them from me. This is also a great place to store ships if you need to. Now, normally when you come to this screen, there would be the buy and sell buttons. You'd have to click over here on storage to switch to the, the storage uh, interface, but it changes this button here to store. And instead of sell or wherever the, the sell button is, and if you put a ship in, it will basically mothball it and stick it in here and it will stay here indefinitely. It'll never be charged for it, it'll never be lost. And it's a great place to store ships. Uh, if you happen to find like a Paragon or an Onslaught or something early in the game, which does happen, I've I found a Paragon in the first month of gameplay before. Uh, I can't field a Paragon. I don't have the character skills to do it. I don't have the money to run a ship like that. But of course I don't want to sell it. Paragons are rare. And so I salvaged it, immediately mothballed it, and shipped it on over to one of the abandoned storage facilities and left it there for most of the game until I was ready to be able to field something like that. Uh, that's a great thing to do, so that you're able to, to keep ships that you otherwise wouldn't be able to, that you'd normally be forced to scrap or sell. Which, I haven't covered scrapping. You can scuttle ships, and doing so will give you supplies, fuel, and machinery. It's a great way 
to make use of heavy demodded ships that you uh, have salvaged. So you just salvage them and immediately scrap them for supplies. And that's an excellent way to be able to boost your supplies. I probably should have done that with one of the ships that I found um, after the previous battle when we were low on supplies. That would have been a good way to, to shore up my supplies and prepare us for future fights. I didn't do it because I didn't think about it at the time, but it's something I recommend that you remember when you're out and about because it's a good way to get supplies when you may not otherwise be able to do so. Anyway, um, let's check the markets here. This is not my sector. We're in Yama. Come on, there we go. Is there anything else here? There's the pirates. Do we want to go over there? I'm not sure. Let's go over to Salamanca again. I just sold the things. I didn't do anything else here. I didn't even check uh, the comm directory. So, oh, they have a mercenary officer, Terry Dimos. Demos? Demos. Let's see what you can do. She is aggressive. That's not the worst um, personality traits. The, there's, I think, five personality traits ranging from cautious or timid. I'm not sure which is. I think timid's the the least, the less aggressive one. So from timid all the way up to reckless. Um, I would avoid both extremes. Timid means they'll avoid combat completely, which is fairly useless because you have a limited number of officer slots in your fleet, and I'm not sure why you'd put a officer in a timid like a timid officer in a ship. The exception being is if you have a dedicated missile boat, like something you're running a whole bunch of extremely long range support missiles on. So you want to have a lot of missile skills on, a, on an officer, but you also want them staying well away from fights. Maybe you consider a timid officer. I'm not sure. I have never really done that, but that just happens to be a situation that comes to mind where that might be viable. Um, conversely, the reckless officers will go in with complete disregard for their own safely, safety. They don't watch their flanks. They just dive in. If you have an entire fleet of reckless officers all running safety overrides, you can basically have your own tiny Luddick path fleet and roll over anyone who's small enough for you to roll over without being swatted out of the way, which can be good. But by themselves, if you're running a bunch of lot less aggressive officers um, that are stoic or stable or whatever, I can't remember what the, the middle ground personality is, and then you've got one reckless one, the reckless one will be deep diving into the enemy fleet all the time and getting their ship blown up while everyone else watches wondering why they're being such an idiot. So I wouldn't recommend reckless unless you're really committing to the reckless life. But this one, aggressive, aggressive's a good personality. I, I like the mix. It's, it's not too timid, but it's not insane. These people like to use their guns. And I think we might actually consider her. She does have strike commander, which is a... Um, a skill devoted to carriers and I don't plan on putting her in a carrier but level two is not bad she's cheap and we need more officers so for now I'm going to hire her because we do have the money to do it and as you notice it, there's an initial there's an initial fee 4,000 based upon her level it'll go up at the higher level they are and then a salary of 700 per month again goes up at higher levels so she's joined our fleet. Now, initially, I believe you have a officer cap of four. And if you see here, idle officers, we can auto assign. It will just slap her in one ship. Uh, and that's fine. I think that's a good place to put her actually. If you want to like reassign them, you can right click to remove them and then just left click to assign captains, allowing you to examine them. And you can see here, she's got armor reduction for our She's got the impact mitigation talent, which you can see what it does there, and the strike commander um, talent, which is good for fighters. But whatever, it'll work for now. I do like having officers. They they are very important. They're actually one of the things that really help you transition from early to mid game is developing a strong core of officers. So. She probably won't be with us really long term unless I find a carrier fairly quickly because having a you, you have a limited number of skills these people can only go up to level 20 while you can go up to level 50 so you really want to be cautious in what you give them you want to make sure you know what you're giving them i can't remember exactly how many skills you can max out i think it's let's say one two three 
four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Around there. What? I don't remember exactly, but they have a limited number of slots that you can max out on their, their skills. And you usually want to take the level three in a skill. It's rare when you have a skill you don't want to take in level three. And so assuming you go for max rank in each one of them, you're going to have a limited number of slots. And she already has one of her slots committed to a um, fighter or a carrier skill. So ideally you'd want to have her take all of the carrier skills eventually and then pilot a carrier, um, which is, with an aggressive captain could be quite good because if you give her bombers, she's going to mess up people pretty bad. So anyway, we did get an officer and that was one of the things I wanted to do, which is excellent. Still, I don't think... Oh, we could grab a Gemini. That's a a light um, carrier, but it's a civilian carrier, which is pretty dangerous. We do have a Condor. And there's a Drover with erratic fuel injector, and this one has... Ooh, Defective Manufactory. The de Defective Manufactory is a really bad demod for carriers. It essentially damages her ability to put fighters on the field which is the entire reason carriers exist and they sacrifice a lot of other stats to be able to do that and so defective manufactory essentially removes or damages their ability to do the one thing that they do so i would avoid um, carriers with defective manufactory at least as, uh, when you're purchasing i mean if you're going to salvage one just salvage it but yeah you don't want to be buying them that way this one has degraded engines it's not too terrible in this context. And erratic fuel injector. That's probably the best option. What do we have for fighters? Some broadswords and talons. Ooh, nothing really strong to follow up the broadswords with. We could do that. I'm going to have to give that some thought. Anyway, uh, we did not find a destroyer today, but we did manage to get another bounty, double our money, um, level up a few more times, which I'm going to focus next on the industry tree. That will be a goal for our transitioning to mid game would be to max out these first few talents in the uh, industry tree, grab a few more officers and strengthen our, our core fleet. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, also, I don't know if you've noticed, but we have the Swift Lycarthos and the Kokorokodon joining us. So we did get the names in there. And uh, we haven't named this guy yet, so if you guys want to have your names in the, the fleet, please just leave it in the comments and I'll add it to the list. Um, if you've enjoyed what you've watched, leave a like. If you want to see more of these, this Let's Play or videos like it, then subscribe. I do have more uh, guides coming out as well for Star Sector. And uh, yeah, any questions, leave them in the comments. Any other things you'd like to say, uh, criticisms or corrections, leave those too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all of you. You know, I, my channel's been growing really fast over the past few days. I've gained hundreds and hundreds of subscribers, which is awesome. It's really exciting. It really helps me uh, want to make more of these. I really enjoy it. So thank you, and I will see you guys next time.